get over this bit, it's deeper. I think we can make it. Is it possible that no human has ever been this way before? Brilliant. It could be a hidden sanctuary where fish can grow undisturbed. I must make every cast count. something hitting it on the drop, and it's still after it. Yes! That's a fish. That feels better. That's better. That's better. That's better. Oh, yes. Better size, better size, better size, for sure. That's a good size fish. <laughs> there it is. a nice size fish. It's over 40 inches long, with eyes that can lock onto its prey, and a huge mouth packed with needle-sharp teeth. This is what I came here to see, and uh, from what I know now, this fish, although it looks like a generic pike, the kind of thing you might get uh, anywhere in Europe or North America, this, in fact, is a very special fish. It belongs to a distinct uh, genetic population that just is restricted to this part of northern Sweden. Yeah, we have one. Right. Could it finally be on the end of my line? That's a kick. Yep. Yes. This is a good fish, good fish. That felt like a tail whacking the line. Yeah, it pulled the other way. Uh, yeah, this is a heavy fish. Heavy fish. Yeah. Uh, it's gone the other way. I need to keep the line clear of snags. If the fish wraps it around a rock, it will all be over. There it is, yeah. on the surface. Yes. Belly is hitting the shallow water now. I'm going to try and bring it in the middle here. <sighs> it's coming in. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Ah, look at this. There we go. Wow. That's a good size. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> uh, start that in, maybe. Seven feet, two inches. It's clear that Wells catfish are growing large enough here to account for the recent lake monster sightings. If this isn't a monster of the deep, I don't know what is. This is just skin covered in slime. Uh, then you've got these tentacles. Uh, this is a fish that navigates and hunts by feel and, and, and reading the vibrations in the, in the water. It's one reason why catfish do so well in muddy rivers like this with low visibility. But the big thing that you just can't help but notice is this enormous mouth. This isn't a fish that takes dainty bites. This is a predator that swallows big prey whole. Just a massive fish, massive. So the big question, is the Lake Garda monster one of these? Um, well, if you're talking about a report in the 16th century, or in fact, anything up to the mid 1900s, then absolutely not. That uh, quite possibly would have been a sturgeon. But what about now? This water behind me connects with Lake Garda. And if a fish like this can be here, then there's every reason to suppose that there might be something like this hiding somewhere there. I've seen my first giant crayfish, and uh, that is still 
sinking in. And the incredible thing is, the more incredible thing is, that wasn't even a big one. That was a medium-sized one, uh, which means they get even bigger. And I can't resist the opportunity to get my hands on a full-sized adult. Todd says if we follow the main river, I might get my chance. that one there. It doesn't, look, it doesn't look like wood. Yep, unbelievable. That's actually a nice one. That's a good size. Getting it out won't be so easy. You can see it's going back into that hollow log. Most of it is hidden, but I can already see it's big. Do you think go un underneath that, this branch here, or, or go, go over the top? I'd go over the top. Over the top? No, straight under the top of its head. Oh. He's just gone back. Gone back in. Gone back in. God, I don't want to grab it in the wrong place. I've got it. I've got to get it out now. Hold on. There we go. Yes. Yes. Who would have thought you'd need two hands to hold a crayfish? This one is enormous, and there's no way I'd want to tangle with these claws. It's one of the largest Todd has ever seen. He estimates it must be nearly 50 years old. This one is a male. Two big differences, the lack of eggs under the abdomen, but also the size of those claws, those pincers. Uh, absolutely formidable on this. It's one of the most incredible creatures I have ever held. It's a bit alien-like, and I can hear its mouth parts moving. Never seen anything like it in fresh water. What a spectacular find. I'm in Australia investigating how the once teeming Fitzroy River now appears to be empty of big fish. And I've discovered there could be an unusual cause, poisonous cane toads. Can I have a look? Can I get through? Where is it? It's perfectly camouflaged. I can see it, yeah, I was, I was looking straight at it. After seeing one now, it's likely I walk past many without noticing. It's big. It's, it's very big. Before the search began, I took the precaution of checking my hands for any cuts. Here we go. Getting any cane toad poison into my bloodstream could trigger a fatal heart attack. This is the first time I've seen one of these. It's strong. It's very muscular. This is a big toad, and one part of it makes it potentially lethal. So the whole reason these animals are such a problem is these, uh, these poison glands you've got on the neck. And it's toxic at all stages. This applies to the tadpoles, it applies to the eggs. So in terms of a survival um, mechanism, it, you know, it, it's, it's a really, really good defense. Cane toads are capable of killing anything that eats them in water as well as on land, including fish that normally prey on native amphibians. When I was hearing about the disturbances, you know, the strange things happening in the Fitzroy, I was thinking some kind of new predator. But I wasn't thinking of new prey. Here's an animal that's dangerous, not because of what it eats, but what happens if something else eats it? And along with their poison, it's the cane toad's ability to cover ground that makes them such a massive threat. It's going to surface, it's going to surface. There it is, there it is, there it is, there it is, there it is. Running again. Leaders in sight, leaders in sight. You can see the fish. OK. We have it in the boat. We have it in the boat. 
Dusky Cobb. This is what I was after, and it's a good size one. Dusky Cobb spend most of their life in the sea, but also migrate into rivers. At just over five feet long, this shimmering fish is easily woman-sized. Mark, my guide, has already confirmed that cob have a red reflective layer in their eyes. So have I finally got my hands on the silvery creature behind the mermaid mystery? So I'm thinking for some of those stories at least where people claim to have seen a supernatural creature, a mermaid, breaking the surface of the river, I actually think this real life, flesh and blood creature, was what they saw.